Hello, and welcome back to Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers for another week of uh, randomness, booze, and fun with uh, me. I'm Rich Mackey, and also uh, my partner here in crime. Caitlin Dre, how are you, Rich Mackey? I am doing okay, having some technical difficulties on this end, so hopefully everything goes fine. We're recording remote today, uh, technically in three different locations. Producer Zach is in our office, I am at home, and Caitlin is in her... Uh, I think I want to call it a speakeasy, though. I feel like it should be a speakeasy. It's not that... I don't think that's the right mood, though. Yeah, that's true. It's more lounge. That's a, you know what I mean? It's a lounge. It's a cocktail lounge. A salon, perhaps? Yeah. Does it feel salon? I like that. I think it could. The the like inspiration we pulled from was like sixties Cuba. So like early oh, okay. architecture, like Art Deco architecture. But then like some remodeling has happened and like some updates. And a new couch. So kind of weird. I've heard there's a new couch that came <laughs> yes. in. The couch is here and she's beautiful. I cannot recommend working with a local partner enough. Um, she sourced a lot of really fun, cool things and kind of pulled together mood boards for us and just, yeah, great stuff. Well, so that's fantastic. If you need a rec in the, yeah, in the Midwest area for uh, furniture, I, I got a guy. Really, I got a gal. Uh, She's spectacular. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So um, today we are getting into, uh, I believe we have Jesse, our creative director, chief creative officer, joining us today. Isn't that right? It is right. And I'm told he's very excited, which is really something because... Jesse doesn't get excited about a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, the creative types so. tend to... Um, He's very mellow. Yeah, and they tend to be a little bit more introverted. Like, they want their people, but they don't want to be, like, out there for the whole world. Like, I think Jesse's... Right, he, yeah. He's a little more extroverted than he lets on. Um, but that could also be because we've got mm -hmm. a lot of severe introverts in our office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, by comparison, he's extroverted mm -hmm. on our scale, our yeah. bell curve. I was just... Yeah, I think... I don't think that, like, positive numbers only are enough for us to, like, accurately depict the scale of introversion to extroversion because we have, like... We have, like, some, like, negative 12s, right? On the, on the introvert. I mean, that's pretty far down. But also, I do agree that some are probably <laughs> below your median or middle number, like, below that zero, like, on yeah. a scale. I would, okay. I would agree on that. And it has probably also some situational introversion, but then we go to like negative ones to like threes, maybe like a five. And then I'm like a 12. You are definitely a 12. You are, you remind me of the, this is final tap, turn it up to 11. Yes. You just go one beyond that and because you must. I don't and know. Take it to 12. Yeah. Like, I don't know if we've ever done this. I think it's an interesting exercise. I have a couple of like interview questions when we, when we do like our panel style interviews, I really like mm -hmm. to know what someone's like, if they had to only eat one food for the rest of their life. But my other favorite, like non-traditional getting to know you question is if you were an emoji, which one would you be? Have you ever asked that of the current team? No, I don't think you've asked that of Jesse. Right. I feel like that's something we should have included in Jesse's interview, but mm -hmm. it's already recorded, so we yeah. can't. Yeah. Um, we're doing the intro, intro after the fact for this one. Yeah, what emoji would he be? He could be the eye roll emoji, I suppose. I, I was thinking that or just like the grandpa. Because he's like pleasant and cute, yes. but also has some like, <laughs> he just has like a lot of crusty old man energy, which I love. He is a, 20 something on the outside, crusty <laughs> so old man great. on the inside. Definitely. And he would agree with that. Yeah. He would 100% oh, absolutely. That. He's, he has, he's bringing like a lot of get off my lawn vibes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think one of the most exciting things for him in getting a lawn was to tell people to get off of it. Stay off the grass. So to just like bring it back to the emoji, what to like fully illustrate when I'm going to 11, if I was an emoji, I'd be the party hat and then all the confetti. That's all my feelings. And it's just like. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a lot to think about. <laughs> I don't even know what like I would be. And, and a little bit all over the place, but like still entertaining. 
I think that's you, fun and a little bit all over the place. Mm-hmm. That sounds exactly right and to just me. Like, yeah. 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 Mine would probably be either the thinking guy. like Or just like hmm. a, the wine glass. It could just be the wine glass. <laughs> yes, it could just be the wine glass or six of them or whatever. That would work too. Five wine glasses in a row. <laughs> That's probably pretty accurate. Absolutely. Oh, well, that, you know, talking about wine reminds me of cocktails. And I don't think we've shared a cocktail for this episode no, yet. It's very simple um, today. And I know it's not wine. And I know that you have it. Yeah. And it's pink, right? It is pink. Uh, it is in line with the theme of my cocktail lounge. Um, and also in line with Jesse. So it's just uh, sparkling grapefruit soda. I really love Fever Tree. But you could choose whichever one that you liked. And then uh, a couple shots of gin. Really easy, oh. summery, sparkly. So grapefruit and gin, summer. basically. Mm-hmm. And I with grapefruit it. soda. Yeah. So not grapefruit juice. So you're like shortcutting it there, right? So you yeah. have to do like the grapefruit and the simple syrup and a little bit of splash of something yeah, bubbly. You know what? I wonder if, uh, what are my ingredients here? I think there is like a little bit of... Yeah, so if you want like if you wanted to do it the long way, you could just do like a soda water and a splash of grapefruit juice, and maybe okay. a little bit of simple if you uh, needed. It depends on if you want it there. sweet, because sometimes yeah, you know, you do like a greyhound because you want it to be that kind of bitter tart, uh-huh. well, like non sweet drink. To this, um, what I find interesting about fruit is that it's like less easy to predict like you get some grapefruits that are sweeter than others so yeah mm-hmm. that could be like, yeah we did blood orange cocktails um and got some really great blood oranges but one of them like when you cut into it half of it was just orange it wasn't red and so then it ruins the aesthetic of your like cocktail like it was really weird because half of it was like dark red on the inside and the other half it just sort of like gradiated to a normal orange on the other side like so like half so you can see the triangles or half the other way. Oh, you know what um, I mean? I didn't pay that much attention because we were making drinks. <laughs> I just noticed it <laughs> as we were cutting into it. So I don't know which way we cut it. I think we cut it the non triangle way. I think we cut through it so that it couldn't, you couldn't have taken it out as triangles. You would have taken it out as like half triangles if you were to pull the segments out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So today on cocktails, tangents, and answers, anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Who would have thought we'd talk about grapefruit anatomy before just, any other? So anatomy. can you dissect it for me? What? Where's the? Where are the flower parts? I don't know. I, it's been a long time since mm, I. I think I the the stem area is where the flower was. Mm-hmm. So it's that little like on an orange or whatever. It's that little bump that you usually just snap right off. Yeah. So how is the cocktail? I actually see you're drinking it. Yeah. There today. It's, um, it's just like, it's light and sweet, but not like, it's not like a sugar bomb. Like this would be a good, like, like a uh, porch sip or patio. A what are they? Porch um, sip. Patio. Pa- <sighs> Somebody told patio me. Patio pounder. Yeah. It's not that though. Cause like you wouldn't want to drink a porch <laughs> bomb. So I don't think that's it. I think a patio pounder is a completely different thing. <laughs> More of what you didn't sign up for today. <laughs> and drinks. Sometime we should do the uh, the interesting Zillow homes because there was a there was a couple of those that had like the signage people put in kitchens and bedrooms, and you're like, "What? Do you know what that means?" Uh, definitely very interesting. Um, yeah, yeah gosh. I don't. I don't ever want to. I'm trying really hard not to like yuck someone else's yum. I think, I don't know. Okay. If about that. You know what I mean? But it's like, that's definitely not a choice I would make, but I hope you're happy. That's. Yeah. I think that it is hard because the aesthetic that different people have, and I mean, there's also budget considerations, that's you know, so true. but at the same time, it's like, you know, maybe you should have just done nothing instead of doing <laughs> that. Sometimes nothing is a better choice. Um, I think that's the case in marketing too. Could you just um, and I know not? that yeah, just just leave it as it is and just uh-huh. don't. Um and uh-huh. that can sometimes be good. Yeah. So 
I think that's not what this episode is, though, because that's more like things that we don't like. And this episode is going to be all about things Jesse loves, loves. right? Yeah. Yeah. And there, there are some good ones in here. I, I love whatever Jesse loves as far as design is concerned. It has been just really fulfilling for me to watch him and his creative process. We've done a ton of web work lately and it's Mm -hmm. like, he just has this like, like 50,000 foot view of stuff where he can like pull way back and, and see how a user would flow through a website. And he thinks about that really intentionally. And I don't have a 50,000 foot view. I am like in the minutia, in the details. Like, mm-hmm. Well, you're the person like saying, this is three minutes late. This is due tomorrow <laughs> at 1.53 PM. <laughs> like you have to be in the weeds. And so it's interesting. Your roles are so different in that, but you're also, your roles play to your strengths. Mm-hmm. Like you're really good at that, like driving it forward and keeping them in the weeds mm-hmm. um, and yelling at people like me, not yelling. Of course, you don't I ever yell. Prompting. But no. gently prompting repeatedly when something needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the, the other thing that I like about this um, and, you know, we'll get into it here in a couple minutes though. Mm-hmm. Jesse really, he goes beyond just marketing and design with what he loves. And he talks a little bit about kind of being a leader and what yeah. he loves for his team uh, and those types of things mm-hmm. as well. So, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, like, with that, should we, should we let everybody listen to that and stop listening to us? To that. I mean, I would always listen to us, but that's me being a 12. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here is our episode on things Jesse loves. Enjoy. Welcome back to Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers. I'm Caitlin. Oh, and I'm Rich. I'm still here, too. (laughs) And we're here with our creative director, Jesse. And we're going to talk about stuff that he loves. And I can't wait. Yeah, a little bit different than last time. (laughs) We hope that you've gone back maybe and listened to part one uh, with Jesse to give you an idea. Uh, He is our our favorite crusty old man on the inside. Uh, So... We talk a little bit about that in the previous episode, but, uh, what, Jesse, tell me what you love. So I think number one, uh, is when people, and this just isn't just in marketing, but probably a little bit more in life too, is when people, uh, trust your opinion and decisions in your like area of expertise. So, uh, I just dropped my truck off at the shop the other day. I'm, I'm not going to tell my mechanic how to fix my truck. Or, Could you? Uh, doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> so even if you wanted to, you couldn't. Yeah. And so just like trusting people mm-hmm. that they know what they're doing in their like line of work, I think is uh, one of the things that I really love when you have a client or anybody really that yeah. uh, kind of trusts you in that way. I think that's, that's really important. Yeah. How much of that do you think is like communication style? Cause I know some people that like they are an expert at, they're like in their domain, but they're not necessarily great at being like, I absolutely know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They portray this lack of confidence, even though they know what they're saying is right. So like, you know, somebody can completely lie to you or bluff you about what they do by being super confident about it. And I think in the same flip is what you're saying. Like if you've got this hesitancy, like if your mechanic was like, well, you know, I'll see what I can do about the truck. You're like, I'm going to see what I can do about a new mechanic. Maybe getting a second opinion. Yeah, that's true. I, I see that both ways. There's definitely like uh, being too hesitant and not uh, mm-hmm. acting like you and having confidence in what you're saying. But then the flip side of it is not knowing what you're talking about, but seeming really and, confident. And also mm-hmm. telling somebody who who actually does know that you think you're a big deal. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that actually kind of hurts your point or everybody else's point too and kind of... Uh, under undermines that trust too is maybe they've been hurt too many times before yeah, yeah. <laughs> with that overconfident. Yeah. Uh, so that might be part of it, but yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a confident way to say, you know what, like we we're confident we can figure that out. Like we don't have all the answers and that's a lot of our business. We don't yeah. know necessarily how we're going to approach stuff, especially you, you start with like a blank page most of the time mm-hmm. um, and you don't necessarily know the end vision but you know how to get there and you've studied your whole life and been doing this for a long time mm-hmm. to get there. 
Um, I think that's a great one. And it's something that we do too. Like we talk about, like we have an accountant because we're not accountants yeah. yep. and we're not good at that or don't want to do that. Um, and that's the exact same thing is like, let people do what they want to do and trust them. And that's, you get better work, I think, when you know yeah. the client believes you. That's secu- the security and knowing like you could throw something at the wall to see what sticks. And because the client trusts you, they're going to be like, you know what? I, I believe in that idea or I want to see where that takes us. Like, mm-hmm. this is a good start or, you know, whatever that might look like. That's interesting. Yeah. That actually really ties into the second thing. <gasps> it's uh, when you present multiple concepts to a client and they... <laughs> really like both of them so much uh kind of proving that we we do know what we're talking about but if we i love going into a meeting like that where they can't make a decision mm-hmm. because they love both pieces uh equally because that means we're doing our job really well yeah. when it starts to get to a better analysis of both then versus yeah. when you go in and they're like well i hate option two so i guess yeah. it's option, option one, one. Mm-hmm. Um, you can sort of win by default and we never like winning by default. It's really, we mm-hmm. want to have two really great options and then let's talk about how they're each great yeah. and which one works best in the end ultimately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's you it. really get into the nitty gritty of what they actually really like about both things and you can kind of start to go from it's there. It's like the truest sense of capitalism. Like the competition drives the best idea mm-hmm. to win. Like, yeah, and I love it when um, we've got same same vein when you do something and Desi does something. We've got a couple of designers working on yeah. something, and like I don't necessarily know who did what going in. I can probably guess. It's getting harder. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, but I do know your style pretty well. Um, but when I can look at them and go, "Wow, I love both of these," and I would be perfectly happy for the client to choose either yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just really fun and neat. And then like to also then go all the way to the client without knowing, which I did on one of the websites you guys did, not knowing which one of you did which concept and having them pick one and then having to be the junior employee. And what I love about that is your celebration. Uh, Like they love both of them. They happen to pick, you know, hers over yours, but it's not a competition between the two of you. It's, It's leveling everything up. And the fact that, she did such a great job means that you guys are working really well together and you're pushing each other. Mm-hmm. And that's just such an amazing, amazing feeling for me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What else? What else is on this list? Um, man, all these kind of fit together. Right. Uh, when we solve a really big problem, I love <laughs> doing that for people. <laughs> it's so stressful, like leading up to it. I, mean, <laughs> yes, I, would, I would love to hear like your most recent big problem without like naming names, but. Oh, man. You're really good at Reach putting me on the spot. The archives. I've got a whole bunch. <laughs> they're not related to design, and I'll let Jess do it. Take I mean, uh, so, so part of part of this was that it it um, kind of relates to so many things. It could be a design problem. It could be mm-hmm. a development one, or even just like a messaging point or yeah. thing that we're trying to get across. I think the most recent was I, it was actually yesterday. Um, not a developer. I just play one on TV <laughs> and. Uh, I finally got this module to be centered and it was like a really weird position. <laughs> it sounds so dumb, but I was, I was so excited. Uh, those are probably my biggest wins because that's not my area. Yeah. So when you figure something out that. I the historical know. knowledge is allowing you to like peel things back to their like main, main points. Yeah. yeah and you've really been bleeding. I remember like, Oh, bleeding over, not bleeding in a bad way. Sure. <laughs> like, yeah. Sorry, back. sorry, bad bad transition <laughs> for me. But you had started bleeding into like the HTML and the web development. I mean, geez, like probably five years ago. You at one point I remember like we needed some HTML banner ads, and you're like, I'll figure out how to do HTML banner ads. It's a design thing, but it's a coding thing, but it's also a design thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you like dive in there, not to the point where you know you're gonna go hard code a whole website from scratch, but using the tools you do for design and getting those to work in a CMS or Mm -hmm. the back end of WordPress or wherever and getting all that to work because it's different. Like the end result should be similar. Like I want this thing centered Mm -hmm. and in InDesign, you'll have that done in like four seconds. Right. Snap to the guides. Just do what I'm telling you. It's a button. Just go. (laughs) Click the button. And I'm like, well, we can be so different. Mm -hmm. When you win that, it's like, it's like, okay, this seems like a really small win, but it's actually a pretty big deal. And now I've got that knowledge Mm -hmm. to take forward and move forward. I'm realizing it's like an interesting overlap of your personality because you are so creative. 
but you are also like very rigid in like structure and organization, and, which is such a strength. Like that's what makes it so are, frustrating when I can't figure it out. Yeah, like you are a creative unicorn in that sense because in addition to being like the creative guy, as far as like that side of your brain and like thinking big picture things, you're also like our process and server like North Star where you're like, well, if Jesse doesn't think this is going to work, it's probably not going to work. So it's interesting that because, because coding is so rigid and like there's, there are many ways, this is me playing, playing a developer on TV, but like there are many ways to kind of get to the root of a problem, but it is very structured Mm -hmm. and there's, there are only so many like numbers and letters you can plug in to make it do the thing that you want to do. So on the, the structure of the server, I really appreciate Jesse for that. And we, he manages we lost that. It. Um, because <laughs> the one thing that um, we didn't get to that Jesse hates, and I don't want to go too far, but I'm going to take this on down. Oh, we can go back. Yeah, um, he's really he's, <laughs> Jesse's computer has multiple desktops for different things. Like if he's working in InDesign, there's a whole desktop for that. Like he slides over to it. If he's you know, doing other things. He keeps his chat things on his laptop window. Like, it's very prescriptive. Mm-hmm. My desktop, there's one. Oh, God, it's chaos. And <laughs> thank goodness that Apple created that, like, group by type. So I just have little stacks down the right-hand side. When I ungroup by type, and they not only fill the screen, but they fill the screen in layers on top of oh, each God. other. Just like an infinity window of sadness. Jesse, mate, he's, he's ready to punch something right now. I'm just thinking about it. Like, I'll clean that up for you. So... <laughs> That would be me on the server. It'd be like, oh, it's on the server. And people would be like, I have no idea where, where? It's. Just search for it. Just search. Um, <laughs> luckily, Jesse has that great folder structure. Um, okay, but before we get away from solving big problems, mm-hmm. um, there's one that you solved like recently that I want to touch on. So I promise this won't be painful. Uh, it'll be a good <laughs> Jesse thing. really needs public accolades, so this is going to be great. Okay, so it can be a little bit painful. Um, <laughs> But we were working on a value proposition for a new client, uh, which is one of the things we do in like our strategy and planning. And um, you know, writer under you was working on it, which because you oversee writing as well, because you're chief creative officer. Um, and so he worked on it. I reviewed it and was just really like, ah, I just don't feel like it's there yet. Um, and you and I had a conversation. You kind of kind of worked out my frustrations with it. Like, what are you talking about? Like, give me some good feedback. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, it needed a little bit more hard. It was probably like only focused on one part of the business. And you took that and you went back and you big, big, this is a big task is for a brand new client that needs to, you know, be impressed basically. And you took that back and you worked with uh, the writer on it. And like, I just tried to stay out of it. I try to stay out of things. I don't always do a good job. <laughs> and sometimes we need to I feel like sometimes though we're like, Brett, help us. Like you're like our security blanket. You can or... always call me if you like you need me. Um, but I stayed out of it in this instance. And I did start my career as a writer. So it's that's a hard area for me to stay out mm-hmm. of. Um, but recognizing that it's, you know, you supervise that. Came back a week later. Like, you know, I checked in with you and you're like, we're still working on it. And I'm like, okay, like, I, <laughs> I know it's hard, but let's go. Um, and you came back about a week later. And not only was there one value proposition, there were three value propositions. All of them approached the client's business from a different way, a different direction. One a little bit more broad, and a couple of them that got more specific. Great paragraph explaining it, great supporting points. And I was like, yeah, like this is great. I absolutely love this. And I told the writer directly, like, hey, nice job on those value props. Like, you really got that. Mm-hmm. Um, and he shared a little bit about the process you guys went through, which was great. So for me, um, being able to have you focus on a piece of creative that wasn't where you started your career, you're an illustrator, you're a designer, but you're in charge of writing too, you're in charge of our creative product, <laughs> having you solve problems in that area, I mean, selfishly as a business owner, it's an area <laughs> I don't have to solve problems now because I would be the one default solving writing problems and I still do because mm-hmm. I enjoy it. Um, but that was a really great one for me. Um, and moreover, the client, like, he threw out one of the three value props, which is probably a good thing, but really torn on the other two. He likes the really broad one, and he likes one of the other ones that gets a little bit more specific. Um, so Back to the other love point that we had of giving multiple good pieces. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> Bring it right back right. around. Tying it all together. And trying not to embarrass you too much. Yeah. Um, you are the color of our little love <laughs> drink, you know, our love vodka. Um, but it's appreciated. And I think that that's something that we, we do fairly well is tell each other when something's going good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Enough about that. 
What's your last, like, let's put a bow on it. What do you, what do you love the most? Yeah. So the last one kind of ties in with, uh, the end of the, the things we hate, uh, episode when I tried to end it on a, on a good note. Not necessary. Well, we tried. <laughs> uh, Different episode. <laughs> and it's really about, uh, I love when we can make a positive difference in somebody's business Um, and not just in their business, but maybe in their lives or somebody else's lives. Uh, Because at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to get the word out about their business and hopefully give them customers, but it's all about improving that. So uh, we give them something that helps their business. Maybe they can, uh, hire more people mm-hmm. and those people can provide for their families. It's just kind of a ripple effect, uh, that, that just kind of spreads. So. Yeah. Um, is there anything recently? Like, I think that we had a client you did a website for that you really loved that actually like came back to us with really positive feedback, which is another thing. We love internal positive feedback. We love mm-hmm. external positive yeah. feedback. We love external negative feedback or creative <laughs> constructive criticism, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, anything that makes things better, but like talk a little bit about that one client. Um, you know, we won't name names, but yeah, kind of what happened with them. The, that one really sticks with me because it, it was a website we were all really proud of. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favorites uh, ever that we've done. And they came back after, you know, a few weeks and their traffic had increased and they actually had to hire, was it, was it three? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Three, three, new, three staff. new staff to, to keep up with. And not like entry level staff either. They're right. like, no, they're they, professional services. Yeah. Like these are, these are good jobs that you've mm-hmm. got to pick somebody for. Yeah. So when we get that like immediate, uh, like positive f- feedback and that we actually really did make a difference yeah. on not only their business, but again, the people that they hired, uh, the service that their customers are getting in return mm-hmm. are all benefiting. So just making that uh, positive. Yeah, the way everything just sort of trickles downhill. It's yeah. that old, uh, you know, the butterfly farts in was a Brazil or wherever, and there's a tsunami in Japan, and it's all <laughs> related. Sure. It's, a, it's a, the butterfly flaps its wings. But... I think we're gonna have to Google whether a butterfly farts or not yeah. because I like that. <laughs> but it's that, that effect and it's the same thing like with the economy like you know what we do is help somebody else and then mm-hmm. in turn they can pay you know, they pay us for a service they get people paying them for their services they use that money to hire staff and pay them they go out into the community and buy groceries and buy houses and remodel and do whatever give money to another business that then employs us and it all just... yep, yeah it all it just creates this big circle and again exactly <laughs> if you get enough people like with that mission from an advertising standpoint, it, take, it elevates it above sort of the like, Oh, cheesy ad man kind of a thing. Well, I think sometimes two marketers get a bad rap. Like, we're, oh, yeah. you know, it's like this, like we're trying to sell you something. And it's like, yes, we are trying to sell you something, but it's not out of a, like a deep seated, like it's not like a yucky yeah. selling. Like, it's like, it's yeah, I, think, yeah. I think what gets lost in that kind of like, way of thinking is that people are getting something in return for that money. Mm -hmm. Like whether it's a service or a product or something, they're, they're exchanging their money for something else. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, yeah. And our ultimate goal to your point is to help their business grow because if their business grows, our business is going to grow. Like we only Mm -hmm. grow if our clients grow. Right. I love that. Hey Jesse, this is great. Thanks for sharing with us the things that you love. Yeah. Thanks for having me. That's it for another episode of Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers. We hope you enjoyed listening. We enjoyed recording and this week's cocktail. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Rich Mackey. I try not to make it too difficult. It's just my name. And you can find our agency at Antidote underscore 71. That's A-N-T-I-D-O-T-E underscore 71 on Twitter and Instagram as well. And you can find me at home sipping a craft cocktail prepared by my in-home bartender. It's my husband. (laughs) 
We'll be back next week with another episode and a whole new cocktail recipe, plenty more tangents, and of course, answers to those pressing marketing questions. And if you'd like to send us a question, you can go to ctapodcast.live to get in touch. Or you can call our hotline at 402-718-9971 and leave us a voicemail. Your questions might be used for future episodes of the podcast. For now, like and subscribe and we'll see you next week.